What's up you guys? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been following the journey and you've already been keeping up with Nikki and Mallory. But if you are new here, welcome. My name is Treasure, also known as Nikki. I'm the owner and designer of Nikki and Mallory and Nikki Made. I am a handbag designer, leather crafter, and leather craft instructor. Being that it's a new year, I have a lot planned, which is why I'm showing up to do this renewed introduction, but also to let you guys know that I really appreciate your support. I don't always get an opportunity to look at my comments or check my emails. I'm an entrepreneur. I wear like 20 hats every single day. So I don't always get time to just sit down and bask in the support that you guys give me. The reason why I created this channel was to teach you guys what I know, what I learn, and to kind of have you follow along the journey because people don't believe in themselves. And it's not until they see other people doing something that they wish or desire to do that they start to believe in themselves. I'm an advocate for each one teach one. So I don't want to just pop up here and show the machines that I have so you guys can buy them or show you different techniques. I really want you guys to learn and to grow and to expand and elevate and possibly quit your day job if you can and generate extra streams of income with your talent or skill sets or what have you. This channel means a lot to me because when I started out in handbag design, there weren't as many videos on YouTube. It was very, very minimal as far as resources that were available and people teaching you how to do stuff for free. I have been very thorough in my process of learning and growing. If there's a technique that I don't know, I'll figure it out. If there's something I want to learn, I'm researching it. And I think that's what a lot of people don't want to do is the research. They don't want to do the work. And then they wonder why they are not as far ahead as they would like to be. So now, of course, YouTube has grown. The space has grown. There's a multitude of videos to teach you anything that you want to learn. But since I am already teaching, taking product shots, collection shoots for my business, the list goes on and I won't even get into that right now, but we will cover a lot of that moving forward. It's possible for anybody to do. You just have to put in the work, do the research, put in the time, and be serious about it and focus. So hopefully I can teach you a lot more of what I've learned, what I know, and we can all grow together. If you don't know anything about entrepreneurship, if you don't know anything about being a business owner full time or creating pieces that you sell to people and how to generate income, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the journey. It gets real, it gets raw, it gets real uncut. It gets challenging, but it is so beautiful and so rewarding. And that is what this new year is gonna be about for this channel. So make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below any ideas or suggestions that you would like to see via video, even if it's a bag that you wanna learn how to make. Now, now I cannot promise that I will deliver on everything, but I will pay more attention and try to craft this channel to cater to the things that you wanna learn and see. I also wanna get into this question that I always get. What sewing machine are you using? Now, I don't know, I don't know, but I'ma just put this out there. When I started out, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, okay? My stitch was looking crazy. My bags used to look crazy. It is a journey, okay? And I used to think, if I had that sewing machine that that expert has or that person has, maybe I'll be able to sew better. And the thing is, I've had people tell me that specifically. Can you please tell me what type of machine you have so I can sew like you? And that is not the case, let me tell you. Every bag, every design, every technique, every stitch, every edge coating, I practice like Kobe Bryant in the gym, day in and day out. So please don't think that you need all the high tech equipment or machineries or tools, you don't. There were years that I went without certain machines or tools or what have you and still produced amazing pieces. Now granted, it's good to have. It does enhance your work, 
but it's about the love and the passion that you put into your products, your pieces, and it's about the amount of work that you are willing to dedicate to perfect something, to make something great. Now, if you're asking because you want to make a new investment, you're curious as to what machines work for me, you want to know what I'm working with, I got you. I got you. So let's get into that. I'm going to show you my design room and show you around and make sure you subscribe because I am getting a new machine. I invested in this machine and I'm happy that it's on its way. So make sure you stay, follow the journey and see what else I have to show you. So this is my design space. It does not have all of my machines, but it has most of the primary machines that I use. I just got this from Made on Jupiter. It is a hot edge creaser and it has all the little tools or the extra tools that I purchased for it. I have yet to use this, but I'm super hyped to use it for my new collection. This is my, I don't know why this is still covered. I was doing something and I needed to cover this. But this is my Chandler walking foot industrial machine. You guys constantly ask questions about what saw machine do I use? This is my ride or die. This is my first industrial machine. I actually started out with a domestic saw machine and it was a single one. I still have that. It's in my storage closet, but this baby gets the job done. This is what I use for 98% of my bags. So now you know, Chandler walking foot industrial machine. It's a servo motor. Um, I'm not with the technical stuff, so I'm not gonna even go there. I typically use a 92 nylon, bonded nylon thread, or I use a 69 bonded nylon thread. Those are some of my threads. I don't have everything out because I don't like clutter. I don't like mess. I can't work like that. So I have pretty much all the essential things that I need to use. My scissors, my ride or die double-sided tape. Y'all know I cannot go without that. I can't design without that for the life of me. So yes, my double-sided tape, my rulers, all of my burnishers, um, glue brushes, stuff of that nature, clips that I use for my leather, and some other little stuff up here, daubers, uh, strap rulers, all that good stuff. Then I have my Master Tools Edge Burnisher by Weaver Leather. I love this machine. I do wish it had more power in the burnishing section. This has a lot of power. But for some reason, this section, it burnishes well, but not as good as I would like. But this is my baby for edge burnishing. I also have a hand press tool. I have two of them. One is from Weaver. The other one, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> then I have my brother sewing machine, which is super animated and I love it. It's the Innovis BQ2450. This thing is, hold on, let me adjust the light because it is so bright. It has a light of its own. As you can see, I love this thing so much. I use this machine for linings. I do still make clothes periodically. It's not my specialty. As you know, I did come from fashion design and yeah clothes burned me out so it's not my specialty but I do use this for a lot of my bags that have linings in them this is the tool compartment which has different types of feet adjustments and all kind of binder adjustments binding adjustments so I just leave that there it has everything that I need and then if you lift this guy up, this is where you put your thread. When I, mean, I tell you I love this machine, you guys, like, oh my gosh. Thank you, brother, for this. That is everything. Then I have my cutting table, which I created myself. I wanted something to replicate the cutting table that I used to use in my fashion design program. It was not exactly like this, but it was this height, this size. I needed something wide enough to 
place my leather on and cut it without having oh my gosh I'm not gonna even get into it if you guys saw the little bootleg table that I used to use it was a nightmare so now I have compartments where I store most of my leather a lot of my bigger pieces of leather go in that storage closet which also holds my a lot of my handbags everything that I have made that storage closet has a lot of my filming equipment hardware and all that I do not like stuff out so the stuff that I have out is enough for me and I can work around this stuff but I don't like mess as I said so this is my little electronic cubby I have cameras lenses all that this is my scrap leather and then my other bigger pieces of leather I keep my hair on hides here my veg tans here and then in this cubby I keep most of my tools my needles punchers I mean literally everything mallets and then my um, leather punch tools and chisels strap cutter all of that is down here these are my cutting boards or pound boards of course and then over here we have the weaver leather heat press this is my brass imprint set so this is where I do a lot of my letterings and logos and all of that I use gold foil mostly um, love this thing you do have to play with the heat adjustment to get it just right but it's good um, this guy I don't talk about much because I don't use it I purchase it on impulse I was actually working on two collections at once a couple years ago I really needed a cylinder arm I just impulse shopped and got this it did help with my collection but it's not a machine that I would recommend you guys don't know this right here is a cylinder arm industrial machine walking foot I might be selling it so be on the lookout but I don't know I might just use it for when I start hiring more people and they can you know pretty much work on that machine so they don't mess up my new machine that's about to come these are just some leather swatches that I keep around when I'm going through collections right now I'm working on a collection so I like to keep my leather swatches out visible so when I start designing I know exactly what I'm working with um, but yeah this machine really is good for getting around edges corners stuff of that nature I don't recommend it it runs like a dump truck and that's all I have to say for that on the other side of my cutting table I have my trusty tripod who should be in the closet but I have my literature I'm not much I'm not big on like book reading for handbags or any of that stuff I'm self-taught I'm very visual so books do nothing for me unless they have pictures but I highly recommend this bag design book by fashionary it is amazing if you are just starting out I have my fabric swatch book here which is from my fashion design program I literally have studied fabrics and all of that so I would recommend if you do work with leathers this would be a really great book to kind of separate your leathers and um, create swatches so you know what's what um, but yeah a lot of my labeling printer paper all that stuff is here and then I have zippers piping velcro anything you can think of and that little guy and then over here I have all of my glues dyes adhesives yeah 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 all that stuff is here so that is pretty much my space I also have my cutting mat on my cutting table I just use it sometimes because even though I can cut on directly on this table I just don't want to mess it up I want to keep it as long as I can so I do use a cutting mat every now and then this is my saddle stitch I had another one it disappeared so I had to get another one thanks to Weaver Leather for supplying my beautiful saddle stitch some of you may just use a machine or some of you may just hand stitch I do both so this saddle stitch comes in handy then over here I have of course my model form with some of my collection images from I think this was my very first 
photo shoot for Nikki and Mallory. Behind here, I have my calendar, which I still need to fill in. Um, but I cannot operate. I can't do anything without <laughs> my calendar. Things have to be written down or I won't remember them. I have a lot coming up, a lot going on. And that is about it, you guys. This is my sewing space. I do have an eight tongue clicker and a skiving machine, but that is at my grandmother's house because it's way too heavy and too big to fit in here. My grandmother's house in her extra bedroom is where I started creating. And then I migrated to this space, which I love, but I'm also growing out of really, really fast. I had to move my office downstairs in the dining room because where I'm gonna put where I'm gonna put my desk, my computer desk and my computer. It's too much. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this space. This is my little sanctuary. All right, you guys, so that's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I really hate saying that at the end, but it really does help the channel, and it also lets me know what you would like to see more of. I look forward to engaging more with you, creating more with you, and helping you grow, elevate, and expand in your own artistry. Remember to check back and check out that new machine that I have on the way. If you are interested in learning how to make this cutting table that I have, also check out that video and it, it will be on the way. And I will catch you on the next video. Until then, be good to yourself, follow your passion, and don't listen to the naysayers around you because half of them are not even attempting to do the things that you are doing. All right, until the next time, peace out.